Greetings, people of God. Welcome to another glorious Sons of God broadcast. My name is Minister Ronald Wilkerson, and my phone number is 781-531-5430. Uh, once again, Ronald, like Ronald McDonald, Wilkerson, W-I-L-K-E-R-S-O-N. And um, I just want to start off right now just by, you know, every now and then when somebody give you something, the most polite and etiquette thing to do is uh, to say thank you. So, I right now want to tell the Lord thank you for what he's doing in my life. And I have to state this thing in it and speak it out. You know, so very important, like something that we kind of overlook and kind of like miss in the spiritual world. You say, I have the word of God, but really, you know what? With the word of God, we need to say it again. It's in the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 11. He said, thou must prophesy again. And so this, since this word of God is a guaranteed thing, when you read it and speak it in faith, it's, it, you're prophesying. They said the testimony of G, G, uh, Yahshua Hamashiach, better known as JC, is the spirit of prophecy. prophecy. Now, that's awesome. So he said when you read this word and believe that's for you, you prophesying that very minute. And this is powerful because, uh, you know, I heard... Many of um so-called preachers, I say so so-called preachers, not because you know I'm like coming against people that are making godly testimonies, but for the most part, many so-called preachers, once again, they just made a business out of the word, the gospel, and um, many um, that are seemingly doing the word of God and the will of God. Uh, into it for totally different reasons, and uh, you're gonna see that. I heard somebody say it's gonna be so uh, mostly preachers in hell. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's, it's gonna be a lot of so-called preachers in hell because they was up there claiming to be doing something as like it was spiritual or for God, but then they found out it wasn't. Like so many um, this year and last year and year before that. It's been so many shameful things spoken of concerning these so-called preachers of God. And, you know, it's just shameful. I don't want to name none of them because I'm not happy about it. But it's just true. Some of the things they proved in court by facts that these so-called men of God preachers or so forth have done to females, young boys and so forth, other men's wives and so forth. But, like I said, you know, I just want to say thank you to Father Yah for having me, like, kind of, like, in the midst of having sowed this seed of faith. At first, it was in weakness. I wasn't absolutely sure that Father Yah was going to come through me, come through for me. So, Paul said it was sown in weakness in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said it was sown in weakness. But it was raised in power. And the reason why he said that, he was talking about our faith. He said, how do you know that? Because, I'll tell you, um, the word of God in the Gospels, it says that the, uh, the children of the kingdom are the good seed. Then it says, Luke 8 and 11 said this, the word of God is a seed. He said, this, the parable is this, the word of God is a seed. And then he said that the kingdom of God is a seed. And then he said, faith is the seed. So all this is pointing back at us. Because we are the seed of God that is to bring forth the fruit and the harvest of the kingdom of God. It's to bring forth the harvest of the fruit of the kingdom of God. So your seed that you sowed in much weakness, because you say, okay, for example, me, I was diagnosed with diabetes and they had to cut my leg, left leg, left leg off below the knee. And so, but you know, as you know, I was taking my pills and needles for years or whatever, 
And then I was, as I was reading it and advancing in the Word of God, and what I noticed after spending much time sincerely studying in, in the powerful Word of God, it did something to my mind. I said, wait a minute, hold on. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the six steps for man. Well, by better yet say the six steps for the sons of God that happened to Yahshua HaMashiach at the same time, simultaneously, in other words, they call it. When he died, we died. When he was, okay, it goes, when he was crucified, we was crucified. When he died, we died too. When he was buried, we were buried three. When he was quickened, we were quickened four. When he was raised... We were raised five, and right now we're seated with him in heavenly places, six. Six steps for man. So, okay, like I remember I said, this is exclusively for the uh, sons of God, the Melchizedek priesthood, the ambassadors of God, those that are bringing the realities of heaven into this earth. It's the will of God to take away the first and establish the second. Hebrews 10 and 9. The will of God is take away the first and stab the second. They said, what is the will of God? He said, um, that God, I picked the right college to go to, the right school to go to, the right house to buy. I pray for that in faith. Okay, that's great to pray for everything towards God in faith. But there's a faith that is required before you get through the flame and sword that the cherubim is carrying. Remember, many of you may not know that when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, in other words, they disobeyed God's commandment in the garden by eating of the evil tree. He said, if you want to eat of the tree, all these gardens, all these trees in the garden you can eat from, including the tree of life. But Satan deceived them into eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil first. So, and uh, Father Yah told them the day that they eat of that tree, they would surely die. But he wasn't talking about physically and naturally. He was talking about they would die from the life of God. Since they obeyed God, God took his spirit back from them, and they, and they died. Now that I'm on this, I want to just say that when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, Satan said, okay, they're out of the protection of God now. I'm going to tear their butt up. So when Adam and Eve was kicked out of the garden, Satan used to come come up from hell and set Adam and Eve on fire. On fire. And then Adam and Eve would cry out to God. And God would send his angel to put out the fire and, and rebuke Satan. But then Adam cried out to the angel and said, Adam cried out to the angel and said, I remember the time when I could see you. Now I can only hear you now that I've been kicked out of the garden. And he said, I also remember the time when fire didn't burn me. I could just touch it and grab it. It wouldn't burn me. But since I've been kicked out of the garden, now the fire singes my flesh. It scorches me. And there were some other things. He said, Adam used to even could fly. So, you know, as I'm sitting there uh, years ago, well, months ago, taking my uh, needles and my pills, as I was reading the Word of God, and I was noticing in my much studying of the Word of God, in the midst of all that, kind of unconsciously, in other words, without me noticing, Father Yah was renewing my, my mind because of what He was showing me in my spirit. By revelation, each time I got a revelation in, in the Word of God, it got me a step closer to being free. And so, what are you talking about, man? I'm talking about. He said, "This is the Word of God that quickens your mortal flesh." <clears throat> so, uh, Yahshua Hamashiach, better known as Jesus Christ, with a J on it. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. The flesh don't profit you nothing. It is the spirit that quickens. And that's the word. So out of the midst of those six things that happened to men as they happened to the Son of God,
better known as Yahshua HaMashiach, being crucified with him. We died with him. We were buried with him. We was quickened, raised, and seated with him in heavenly places. I know many of you out there say, you mean to tell me I'm seated in heavenly places right now? Why am I experiencing all this pain and misery? Because John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But you got to know it first. And today is the first time you heard this word. So you now that you know the truth, now you can work on being made free. But you know what? Some people, no matter how you might try, first of all, if you're not the seed of God, but the seed of the serpent, you can think you're trying as much as you are all you want to. I don't know, you might be just playing church because your friend took you to church and you said you like the music, but that ain't it. That's not it, man. It's more than that. It's not a outward appearance thing as far as like anything that got to do with your five senses. Hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and uh, uh, seeing. Anything that got to do with your five senses, Satan can manipulate it and deceive you in it and all kinds of horrible things. That's why I said we walk by faith and not by sight. Because anything that you can see and you and you find and you think you can put your faith in it, it's not reliable. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith is something mysterious about faith. Faith is both in uh, the gift category of God and the faith category of God. So we see now that faith is one of the... Um, Faith is, uh, what, what they call it, of the spirit. What they call faith, uh, of the spirit, and they say, oh yeah, fruit of the spirit. Faith is a fruit of the spirit and just a gift of God that is without repentance. So what does it mean that God, um, God, uh, how did that scripture go? Oh yeah, gifts and callings are without repentance. So what, what does that mean, gifts and callings are without repentance? That means that God can give you a, a gift and you can have something in your life that you need to repent for. So that so that means that God can give you a gift knowing that you're not a spiritual person. And you say, that's what it means? Yeah, that, that's what it means. Well, how do you get two urinals? You bought them? I thought you didn't bring them. Everything is showing up. Okay, yeah. You say, what you say, man? Yeah, I got, I, I was pr pronounced with diabetes. And I got my left, left leg cut off a little knee. I, just, I thought I had, me and my wife had to move from our God-given um, apartment because they had to do some work on it. And we had to go to the hotel for 48 days. And it's a pretty nice hotel. I and mean, that's a gift. And I did the math. It costs close to $8,000 to be here for 48 days. And we don't got to pay a penny. And so, you know, my wife really needed a break, but she's still working over here. She worked hard for me. God bless her, you know. And, you know, we we dealing with things, or well, she dealing with things that we know we need to be strengthening spiritually. But, you know, I notice myself sometimes it seems like I'm beating her down. But I'm not really trying to beat her down. I'm just trying to lift her up and to reach for something high and lift it up that God want to have, her to have. But it seemed hard to reach it up to it and get it. But nevertheless, you know, the word of God, you know, it's not um, meant to pull somebody down, but to pull them up. But sometimes in the midst of trying to pull somebody up, if they're not willing to reach, you know, for what you're trying to get them to reach up to, it can seem, you know, harassment. But nevertheless, we're going to, we pray and ask God to teach us to walk, uh, being led by his word, his order my steps in the word. But you want to make sure if, if God is, is leaning towards you being a little um, chastisable, you have to go with what Father Yah is, you know, leading you to do. Like you might have one child that you can almost only look at them, look at them kind of, you know, that certain way and the child knows to straighten up. But another child you might need to spank. And then another child you might get some switches and have to whip them real good <laughs> with the switches. So... But in any case, you don't want to um, hurt none of God's children in the, mis in the name of um, chastising them. You want If God tells you to have an easy hand on that one, you better have an easy hand on that one. He said, you better not hurt none of my children. So, you know, I just now probably gave myself a word. But that's why I pray and ask God to let me, let me use my hand 
in the range and the force that he want me to use and not to go one <clears throat> one little bit over what you know he want me to do so that's my prayer I, excuse me I just now Lee bring me some more uh, soda please I just now did a little prayer for my only self cause my, that's my desire as being a true son of God to you know Nay, come on, Nick. come on now. I need you, huh? Please. Um. So you know, I just wanna. Yeah. Can you bring me some Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew. Yeah. I just wanna be. That was my wife. I'm telling her to bring me something to drink, cause when I'm ministering the word, you know, people say you're a minister. You got an easy job. No, it ain't easy. And you say I, some. I heard somebody say. Being administering the word for an hour is like working, but to like in the physical, like three hours. Because when you're ministering the word, the words of God don't just go flying out of your mouth. You have to push those words out because they're spirit. Remember? Joshua said, My words are spirit in their life. And if this, when you're talking about spirit, the spirit of God is, uh, when you're talking about spirit, we're talking about energy, and this energy of the Word of God, it has to be, the Spirit of God is in your spirit. So now, a minister of the Word of God got to be willing to be used by God, but it's going to cost them something, because that spirit, that is life, it don't just jump into a person. You have to push it into them. Man, what are you talking about, man? Well, anything that's worth anything, it takes effort to apply it. Say, what do you mean? What do you mean, effort to apply it? Like I just said, I tried to keep it and say it as simple as I could from the beginning. Um, the word of God is spirit, and when you talk about spirit, we talk about energy, and anything, any, any, any energy has to be pushed out. It's how you know, man, that you have to push out. Because I just told you, I know it don't fly out. How do I know that? Because I'm, I'm ministering the word, and it don't fly out of my mouth. Sometimes I just get lazy and don't want to minister the word. Why? Because it takes something to get it out there. It don't just play like a recorder on its own. You got to push it out there. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. But I'm telling you, man. Okay, let me just tell you a little bit about this. I wrote it down, right? Um, when I was in rehab, right, for almost two years, my room number was 315. And then when Father Yacht gave me my apartment in the community, in the world, or whatever you want to call it, my apartment number was 315. When they told me, I said, say that again. What's my room number? She said, 315. I said, oh, what? That's, that's my room number here at the rehab. She said, oh, that, and then even the lady said, that's a sign. That must be a sign. Yeah, it, it sure was. And I'm going to tell you all what it means, too. It's a beautiful sign. Um, then when I, um, uh, what was the next 315? Okay, my rehab number, my apartment number. Oh, yeah, me and my wife went to the hotel, and my room number was 315. I said, what? And then when I got, when we got from my stay from the hotel, um, they went to a a building that I had to get some um, some kind of olive oil or some kind of metal from something, like a, a not, not, not medicine, but it was um, like uh, some kind of oil, uh, a perfume type, I mean, cologne type oil or something. But anyway, they went to the building, and the building there was 315. And then I had one more payment to pay on my rental center bill, my final payment. Now you own it. That's what it means now, final payment. It was 315. I said, whoa, this is awesome. Five 315s in a row. And then my sister came over to see me, and she was talking to me about how her so-called church wanted her to go to an outing, and that was March 15th. That's 315. January, February, March, 3, 15, 3, 15. And then here time comes up again. They remodeling my apartment on the inside, and we had to go to the hotel. I said, what if that number is 315 again? It wasn't 315, but it was a better number. It was 303. Now, let me just tell you a little bit what 315 meant. Okay, you got three on the left side. That's what say. I'm, I'm sorry, three on the left side. I mean... Three on the right side, okay, because the sheep on the right hand. 
Oh, okay, so now the way that it spells out is like the three is on the left, but, you know, that's not a big deal. The big deal is that the three represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In other words, the mind of Christ, the three. And the one is me in the middle. The one, three, one. So we got the, the, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the mind of God, three. One, me, and um, five which represents the carnal-minded man, a pentagon that witches uses, I mean a, a pentagram that witches uses, it got five sides to it. And the pentagon that showed that America is satanic is made of five angle shape of the um, architectural building. So that five, uh, you're smelling, seeing, tasting, hearing and touching, five again, so the mind, Hebrews 10 and 9, Father Yah, better known as J.C., said that I come to do thy will, O God, to take away the first and the Sabbath second. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, carnal, fleshly, of the earth, created being. The first man, Adam, was. Um, then he said that, but the, but the last Adam was Yahshua HaMashiach, better known as the Son of God. He was a spiritual being from heaven, and he was a quickening spirit. So, Father, I want you to go from being a created natural man, carnal, to being a quickening spirit. But you have to be quickened by the spirit before you can become that. So you have to be a quickening spirit. So when you once you become quickened by the spirit, then you are a quickening spirit, and that word quickening means a life-giving spirit. So all in the Old Testament, in the um, book of Isaiah, he said, I'm going to use all my quickened by the Spirit, sons of God, to be, in the last days, my salvation to the earth. And you know, that's, that's awesome right there. I want to get all and do a whole video on just that right there. He said, I'm going to use you to be my salvation in the earth. So when Yahshua, better known as J.C., the Son of God, he said, greater work shall you do. And I'm going to just go in here because I know, so I'm going to put it all down there. You know, you know when I make videos, um, really, the way it started, it wasn't, even though I always minister some kind, kind of way to the people for God, I preached on the street for like almost 25 years. Then I, passed, I spent time passing out papers. Tell them pastors that it's no rapture and all that. I did all the working and all the studying and told them where to find it in this book, thick book called the Concordance. Because all the words in the King James um, Bible, they don't mean what you think they mean in English. Because in the original, there was Hebrew and Greek. But when you get a King James Bible and you read the Bible, it don't mean what you think it means. Because all the words got to be looked up in this two-inch thick book called the strongest concordance of the bible okay while i'm on the subject about the bible you know that 1611 king james bible you got with the old testament and new testament right in between the old and the new testament was a book called the apocrypha and it had 14 books within it like first maccabees second maccabees ezra's all these books and let me just tell you but let me first of all tell you that when i was growing up from the age seven to like 17 like 10 years, um, my father and mother adopted two children named Richard and Debbie, and they were white. And then in these latter um, 15 years, my best friend, though so I thought, was a white guy named Alan, and uh, we lived in East Boston. And I thought he was my friend, but after a while, uh, we stopped. After I moved from the building they was in, you know, he stopped receiving my calls, and he stopped calling me. And then my wife went to go visit him, and he, he, they got on the subject of me, and then he told her, don't give me, that she could have the wrong number, but, but don't give it to me. And you know, that was so hurting, you know, that hurt so bad. But you know, by then I had found out the truth about white people, and that they're the seed of the serpent. I said, what you say, Ben? What are you talking about, man? Well, it's true. If you just do a little bit of study, and you, you'll read where... Father Yah, better known as God, let us know that the white man is the seed of the serpent. Um, and the um, seed of the serpent. And and the serpent was brought down to earth through 
the sons of God. And these sons of God in the Old Testament are not talking about the sons of God of today. They were the uh, fallen sons of God. The book of Job 1 and 6, it said there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among, among them. And that word among, when you look it up in the concordance, it means to be inside. To be inside. Like if you eat a cheeseburger, now it's inside your stomach. That's what it means. Satan had so influenced them in the realms of heaven that they took it all into their mind and they chose to do what their flesh was tempting them to do, which was to have sex with these black women because they were black women. And so when Satan uh, manifested these sons of God into flesh, they, they, became, they were white-skinned. So imagine if you went from having no color at all, that's what spiritual beings, they don't have no color at all. And pretty, they're pretty much invisible unless the, the will of God tells them they, they can manifest in a physical seeing type of being so they can talk to mankind down here. They don't need no uh, physicalities in the earth realm if they're not going to be communicating with the uh, saints of God. So when they came down, they went from no color to white. So just imagine if somebody didn't have no color, they was like cast with a friendly ghost or whatever, didn't have no color. What color would they have to have now that they're in the physical? Would, they wouldn't go from no color to brown or no color to beige or whatever you call it, yellow. They would go from no color to white because that's the lightest color out of all the colors. So you go from no color in the spiritual to the lightest color in the natural. It's only, um, it's only, it's a no-brainer really. So if you ain't got no color, what color is available to you first? You can't go from no, no color to any other color other than white. White would be the lightest color on the, in, in this physical realm. So here's a little more story concerning um, the fallen sons of God. Um, it was said before about this woman of God that she was going to have two nations in her womb. I don't know who that was. I forgot. But anyway, she had two nations in her womb. One with Esau, one Ezra. with Ezra, yeah. One with, I'm pretty sure that ain't it, but whatever. <laughs> um, he said, you're going to have two nations in your womb. And it was Esau and Jacob. So when Yahshua, better known as JC, when he was talking to the um, the, the sons of uh, Abraham, he said, we're Abraham's seed, that's true. And so Esau and Jacob were twins in this black woman's womb. But one of the children was white, Esau, and one was black, Jacob. But um, out of Esau and Jacob, they both could state that they were the uh, seed of Abraham. But when they were talking to J.C., better known as, you know, Yahshua HaMashiach, they said, okay, you say you're the seed of Abraham, but if you were the seed of Abraham, you would be righteous. I got the hiccup. I'm trying to get past it. So um, when uh, Yahshua, better known as J.C., told Esau, he said, if, if you're a sinner, you're a slave. And then he came back. He said, we are the seed of Abraham. We ain't never been slave to no man. So you now you know that Esau is a white man and Jacob is a black man. See, now, Jacob would have never said he was never a slave because black folks have been slaves all the way back to the days before, the days of uh, Egypt. And there was there were servants and slaves to the white man. And he said, where do you see that in the, in the uh, word of God? Okay, you remember when uh, Paul called these people? He said, you old whitewash. He called them whitewash. And he said, Joshua, J.C., he said that... Uh, you on the outside you appear to be righteous, but on the inside you're white, white no white sepulchers. He said on the inside of you is white sepulchers. Yep, he said white sepulchers. And there was another incident where he was saying white. Uh, yeah, Paul called this man white man a white wall, a white wall, something like that. 
But here's something else on the uh, seed, of, seed of the serpent. In other words, the white man, the Gentile, Esau. If you right now take your phone and Google um, a white man with a tail coming out of his back, it'll show you the little picture of a white man wagging a tail that's coming out of his back. And let me just throw this in there too because my aunt, well she wasn't really our aunt, she was a good friend of my mother's. And we used to call her our aunt, um, uh, what, uh, what was that woman's name? Oh, Joni Jackson, yeah, we, uh, we got, well, Aunt Joni. She was like an aunt to the family, but she wasn't an aunt. But anyway, she was a nurse. And uh, she used to, you know, work in the delivery uh, room. And every time a child would be born with his tail coming out of his back, the other uh, white nurses would tell her to leave the room. So one time she stood back and was seeing and, and, and was hiding, peeking through the curtain or whatever, and she seen the baby being born with a tail coming out. And it's also been said that um, the white men, they were in the Caucasus Mountains, and they used to have sex with monkeys and pigs. I mean monkeys and dogs. So that explains a little about the tail coming out of the back. And so um, that's why they call them ca Caucasians, because they were born, I mean, they used to live in the Caucasus Mountains. And so it's something else I wanted to say about them. But anyway, like I said, though, like these people that called the, themselves the the Hebrew Israelites, they be saying the white man can't be saved because, you know, they still mad because they used to hang us and like cops shoot us today like we are rabbits in the woods. You can't hate the white man because of that. If God came to the um, place where he said salvation is available to them too. But this, a white man can't like try to preach the word of God on his own and have his own church and all that stuff like they're doing today unless they're under a uh, um, black man. So in Romans chapter 11, it talks about how that uh, the black man is the original uh, man of God. So if, you, if you're only the one that the original man of God, now God ain't going to give nobody else you know, permission to preach his word if they're not the original. So in Romans chapter 11, Father Yah said that if the white man is to be saved at all, he's going to have to be under one of my children, the original Jews. In other words, Jacob, but not just Jacob, period. Jacob had to be dealt with by God, where they called him Israel. So these um, Hebrew Israelites, they're black, and they call themselves Jacob, from the tribe of Jacob. But they're not remembering the fact that they had to be dealt with by God and called Israel before they like they're sticking their chest out right now like they Israel automatically. But Jacob didn't get the title of being Israel automatically. He had to be dealt with by God. Okay, I feel a little bit tired right now. So I, I know I got a lot of stuff in here, but I feel like it's something I know I'm missing out. But like. I really want to talk again about the fact, you know, I really didn't not, don't like what I'm seeing currently or right now in the, this present time from Father Yah because it's mainly pointing at my family. I've been trying to witness them to them and give them word. So, you know, if somebody, when they hear the word and they reject it and they don't cling to it, that means they woke to damnation. They woke to the resurrection of damnation. And so... If you receive the word and want to know more, learn more, study more, that means you woke to the resurrection of life. So I know it's something else I'm missing out on. But I'm going to just take that for now, you know. I'm even scared for my wife because, you know, Father Yah is blessing her to be obedient as far as taking care of me because I'm, I'm, I'm handicapped, but only in my body. I'm being renewed day by day on my spirit, man, so I'm encouraged. But, you know, I'm still praying for her, so I don't want to talk too much about her. I'm praying for her, you know, but I don't know. God been doing something different in the spirit realm and in my life every day. So I'm, all I can do is be prayerful and hope for the best. God bless. Sonship out.